Hello there and welcome to your principles update uh, and it's Friday the 15th of January 2021. Obviously I was hoping that we wouldn't be in a situation where we needed to do these uh, video updates anymore uh, but we find ourselves back in a lockdown situation and going on your feedback from the previous lockdown uh, I know a lot of you said that you preferred the, the sort of the video type message rather than the uh, sort of deluge of letters that some schools are sending out I think people find it quite hard basically to digest sort of letter after letter. So hopefully having a little video uh, mixes it up a little bit and makes it a little bit easier for you to understand some of the things that we're going to be talking about. Um, so first of all, just, just a chance to say hello. Um, obviously sending my, my well wishes to all of you out there. Hopefully you're, you're all safe and well. And uh, and like like we are here, hoping that this is the last time we find ourselves in the situation uh, and looking forward to being able to get back to, to some sense of normality. You know, we, we thought we were there last term, um, albeit in slightly different circumstances, but we find ourselves back here again in our, in our homes, accessing remote learning and remote teaching. So the purpose of this video is to just give you some key updates, hopefully uh, give you some overall updates that affect everybody, uh, and then go through year by year, just a couple of key things that are specific to each year group, uh, as well as a few other things at the end in terms of just sort of important announcements and bits of business that it's just nice to share with everybody. So uh, first thing on my agenda is just to look at remote learning. Uh, first of all, just a massive thank you to everybody for engaging in remote learning. We've had some wonderful, wonderful feedback from parents and students uh, about the way in which we're doing this. Uh, lovely emails about particular members of staff that are going above and beyond to try and really engage with students in this, this way. Uh, it's so, so difficult. And, and hopefully some of the things I'm going to talk about today, you will see that we are responding to some of your feedback, uh, both from, from students, parents and from staff, to try and look again at how here at the UTC we can kind of do things differently um, and we can try and evolve what we've already got in place. But yeah, first of all, we're really, really impressed with the, the attendance, the engagement, just how much people are really buying into the, the time and effort that teachers are putting into planning these online lessons. And it's amazing to see that students are, are buying into that and are really working hard. So um, the big announcement really is that from Monday the 18th of January, so, so this Monday coming up, we are gonna slightly change um, the structure of the day and the way that we do things just to try and make it a little bit easier um, uh, and actually the, the focus really is to try and reduce some of the screen time and um, because some of the feedback we're getting is a few weeks in now five or six hours a day staring at a screen and um, it's not healthy you know we, we've got people reporting that they're getting headaches that they're tired that they're lethargic um, and I get that um, you know when I spend a day in my office five days looking at my computer, I can feel it at the end of the day. Um, so what we're trying to do is look at how we can mix it up a little bit to try and reduce some of the screen time, uh, but keep that engagement and keep that excitement. So from Monday, the timetable is as follows. Uh, nine till 9.30 is still mentoring. So you'll still be checking in with your mentor every single morning, with the exception of a Monday where there is a whole school assembly. Uh, uh, and I have the privilege of, of leading that for the foreseeable future. So every Monday, there'll be an opportunity to, to check in uh, and watch an assembly led by myself. Sometimes I might do it live. Sometimes it might be pre-recorded. Uh, I make a pact now. I'm not going to be talking about the current situation in those assemblies. We, we see and we hear enough about this um, without starting a week off hearing about it as well. Um, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to try and make it a bit more engaging and a bit more different. Um, I, I have a fascination with the human mind. It uh, gives you a bit of insight into my world here. So um, I'm fascinated by how it works and, and, and things that it, it's capable of. So my assemblies on a Monday are going to be largely focused around the way our minds work and hopefully we can use that information to apply that to our learning. It's not just a random flight of fancy. I want to see how we can apply all of this kind of crazy knowledge that we, uh, that we acquire and, and this understanding of our mind and how that impacts on our learning. Um, so that's nine till 9.30. Um, also at some point in the week, your head of key stage will also be doing an assembly. And that's kind of in line with the usual assembly rotors that we had previously in the UTC when we were in school. So two assemblies to watch 
um, rather than just five mentoring sessions. Your morning session, half past nine till half past 11. So rather than that three hour lesson uh, and the vast majority of the feedback we got was that that morning lesson was a long time. Three hours of screen time, three hours of, of one lesson was, was hard going. So we're going to reduce that to two hours. So half past nine to half past 11, you will have your morning lesson. If you were one of the few students that had a few different lessons in the morning, you maybe had an hour of PE or PHSE and then something else, you will notice on your new timetable that the PE, the PHSE, all of those little odd little lessons, they've disappeared from that morning slot. So maybe you had a single PE and then a double maths, you'll just have double maths now. Um, you'll get a break from 11.30 to 11.50, just a chance to, uh, to, to down tools and to go away from your computer. You've then got a one hour, what we're calling session three. Now session three is slightly different because every single day you've got five choices of things to engage with. And again, this is an opportunity really for you to move away from your screen and do something different. So you can do the same thing every day, five days in a row, or you can mix it up and do something different every single day. So the five things you've got on offer is sport and leisure. So we are gonna find a way of trying, trying to keep active and do active things um, from our own homes. You know, I know some of us can't leave our homes or leave our gardens, um, but we're gonna try and come up with a way of, of keeping active in that time. Um, one of the options is, is a book club. Uh, and there'll be more information from the lead teacher about that in due course. It, it could be that we uh, that we purchase uh, an audio book or we purchase sort of an EPUB book and we distribute that to people and you get a chance to spend that hour just down in tools and reading a good book. Um, it may be, um, and don't quote me on this, but it may be that one of my members of staff wants to read a book um, and, and you can just sit along and you can just listen. Um, there'll be some well-being stuff that's in there. So there'll be some opportunities to, to look at how you can keep yourself sane. Um, so some, some calming exercises, some sort of, not, not so much meditation as such, but things where you can focus on your own well-being. Um, there'll also be something called Earth School. Uh, and again, the teacher that's leading on Earth School will send out a bit more information about what that is. But again, it's, it's sort of clips and videos to engage with and then sort of quizzes and topics um, so that is still slightly more screen based, but not teacher led and not sitting there staring and responding. Uh, and then the final one as, as well is kind of it is still screen based, but it's slightly different from what we're doing. Um, we'll be recommending some educational programs and some educational resources. So it may be some YouTube clips to watch. But again, it's a different type of screen time. It's not as intense in terms of the concentration. And like I said, you can do all of them. Um, be sport or leisure, or you can pick one of each a different day. Uh, it's your opportunity to sort of dip in and dip out. Um, we're, we're not going to be chasing registers for that period because actually this is a period where we do want you away from your screens. Um, it might be you watch a little clip to start with, but then after that, you've got that time on your own there. Um, and then you've got a little bit of time for lunch. Uh, lunch is from 11.50, sorry, 12.50 till 1.30. And then you've got your normal afternoon session. So there's two more hours in the afternoon. So you've got your mentoring as per normal, a two hour lesson, a break. You've then got this session three. Time for some lunch and then your normal two hour lesson, half one till half three in the afternoon. So hopefully, again, you'll see that we're, you know, we're trying to respond to some of your feedback about that morning session being too long trying to bring in something slightly different in the middle of the day just to try and mix things up a bit, give you a chance to get up and, and sort of move around a little bit or engage in a slightly different way of learning and then back into normal learning for the afternoon. One thing that I am hopeful now is that all of our students have got access to uh, reliable and usable IT. Please, if you are still struggling with your IT provision, get in touch with us. Um, email slt at gputc.com and then we can forward that email to the relevant people. Uh, if you've got IT but you are struggling with IT issues, it could be logins or passwords or, or anything like that, then again we have a dedicated IT email address. It's not hard to remember, it's it 
at gputc.com. So that, uh, the IT email account is if you've got all of the devices, but for some reason you're struggling to access a particular site or password issues, login issues. If you don't have access to reliable IT um, or reliable broadband, something like that, again, um, email the SLT at gputc.com um, and we'll be able to point you in the direction of the right people. Likewise, if there are any welfare concerns or, or even if you just want someone to talk to, if it's just a case of, I just need to hear someone's voice um, because I want to talk to someone about something, drop us an email. And again, the welfare team, the pastoral team, you know, they are they are online. They are making phone calls every single day. We're still here for you. You know, we, we are still here and we're happy to pick up the phone to have a chat or we can do a Teams conversation so we can do something face to face. Please do not suffer in silence. Please do not think that we're not here for you. Let us know um, if there's any questions or queries and we'll be quick to get back to you. OK, I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes looking at each year group, uh, just a couple of key messages for each year group. So starting with the year nines again, year nines, thank you so much for engaging with your remote learning. It's brilliant to see so many of you online and, and getting involved with what's going on. For the year nines, the main message is two, really. Um, and message one is the same for everybody. It's keep on studying, keep on working hard, keep on doing what you're already doing. The second message for year nines is we need to start thinking now about your options. You know, if we are back after February half term, then the plan is to have an options evening where we do talk through the different options you've got at your disposal. But now is the time to start thinking about which of our specialist subjects you think is going to be your preferred choice. Is it the engineering? Is it the architecture? Or is it the design technology route? It's also time to start considering which of our open options is your preferred choice. Is it geography, computer science, business studies, art? Which of those subjects is your, is your preference? And again, we'll be having an event to, to talk more about those subjects so you understand a bit more about how they're assessed, uh, the types of learning that you'll be doing in there. But, but you certainly need to be having those conversations at home now around the types of subjects that you'll be choosing. Obviously, everybody does English and that's worth two GCSEs. Uh, everyone does maths, be it higher or foundation. Uh, and everybody will be doing the triple science, which is worth three GCSEs. So you'll get six GCSEs from English, maths and science and then your additional GCSEs from our specialist option and from our open option. Now is definitely the time to start thinking about that, because once we get back into school, we are going to start looking at how we can shift students into more appropriate groupings to get them ready for that start in year 10. For our year 10 students, um, again, two messages, really. Message one, again, just a huge thank you to everybody. Um, I teach year 10s myself, so it's lovely to see these guys every week. Uh, thank you for engaging in your learning. Uh, and thank you for continuing to work really hard in, in what is a really hard welcome to your GCSE year group. Um, and secondly, normally in year 10, normally around April time, we do look at year 10s going out on two weeks of work experience. We're a UTC. This work experience, this work related learning is so important to our students. Um, it is very, very unlikely it's going to happen in April. Let's be honest. However, we are still committed to providing you with some work experience. Now, if that can be at the end of this year, in July time, that'd be amazing. If not, we'll need to look at how we can fit that into what is going to be a very busy year 11 schedule uh, next year. So my message to you really is once we do start talking about work experience, there's always two ways of doing that. Um, way one is we go through an external company that look for work experience opportunities for our students. And um, obviously that's quite a competitive process. Uh, and what we find actually here is a lot of our students, a lot of our families already have contacts um, within companies, within their communities, um, and they can actually approach them privately. And then as a school, we can support that. So, so if you are in contact with someone or you do know someone or an organization that you think you'd like to have that opportunity, just have that at the back of your mind ready for when we start having that conversation. So moving on to our year 11s. Wow, I mean, I my heart goes out to our year 11 students. You know, you, when you look at uh, a group of students who have had so much disruption to, to their education over the last 18 months, but a group of students that have handled it with such 
uh, such resilience and such perseverance. You know, I'm, I'm so, so proud of the efforts that you are putting in. Um, and I suppose my message to you now is keep going. We, we are starting to get a picture of what your um, assessment is going to look like leading up to your GCSE results. Uh, day by day, week by week, we hear more and more about what is being proposed. Um, you know, this, this changes on a weekly basis. What we do know is that your teachers will be asked to give um, centre assessed grades. So uh, we will come up with our own assessments of you. Uh, we are being told to delay giving these until right at the end of the summer term so that we can do as much with you to get as much evidence to validate and to prove these grades as possible. So please don't stop now. Now more than ever for our year 11s, this is around um, trying hard, doing the, doing the best you possibly can because the grades you are getting now, um, these are the grades and, and the work you are doing now, this is the work that we're gonna be needing to use as evidence if at a later date there is ever a challenge about one of the grades we give. There is talk about being uh, external exams, we will certainly be doing some type of internal uh, mock exam uh, to give us, again, more recent data about the progress that our students are making. We are just waiting to see what it is that we are expected to test our year 11s on. There has already been an acknowledgement that we cannot set exams, we cannot set tests for the entire breadth of the, uh, the programme of study for different courses. What we're now waiting for is OK, so what should they know? What topics will they be tested on so that we can come up with a sensible uh, and, and ma manageable way forward for our year 11s? Um, I, I will reiterate the message I've said time and time again. No student will get a grade lower than the one they deserve. And by what they deserve, we've now got six or seven months to really prove that they deserve those grades. So keep working hard. Keep engaging with your learning, keep focused, and we will see you guys very, very soon. And, and actually, for our year 12 Sixth Form Foundation group, the exact same message. Um, typically, they are level two qualifications which you are studying, so the process will be exactly the same. So for the year 11s and for the year 12 level two Sixth Form Foundation courses, you know, keep working hard, keep studying. As we know more, you will know more. So for my level three year 12 students, um, quite a short message, really, because for some of you, you have got exams coming up and you have got terminal assessments coming up. And again, very similar message to what we've just said to the year 11s and the year 12 re6 cohort. You know, for you guys, it is about keep going, keep proving that you are worth the grades that we are giving you. Um, and also for you guys, start thinking about UCAS, start looking at that UCAS process, because that is going to be on us very, very soon. So two things, keep working hard, start thinking about that UCAS process. And then finally, the year 13 students. Um, I'm not gonna mention UCAS for you guys because hopefully it's all done now. So congratulations for going through that process and getting that done. I know that'll be a huge weight off your shoulders. Um, for, again, for, for the year 13s, we are, we are still sitting and waiting and watching to see what the guidance is going to be about how you guys are gonna be assessed and how those grades are going to be awarded. Again, we do know that we will be awarding those grades. We are just waiting for the criteria and the framework. So please keep engaging with that online learning. Please keep engaging with the work that your teachers are setting, because again, these next five or six months for you are crucial in us gaining that evidence and gaining that information to justify the grades that we're gonna give you and also to justify any challenge on grades if that happens later in the uh, in the process. So speaking of the sixth form, um, I'm hoping that our year 11 students have uh, put their applications in for sixth form. Uh, the application window has been open for a while now. If you don't know how to do that, then just go straight to our website and right there at the top, there is a, an opportunity to, to apply for a sixth form place. Click the link, follow the link, and that takes you right through that. Um, I, I do know that my head of sixth form is uh, is interviewing students uh, this week, um, internal and external students. You know, we do only have a limited number of spaces in our sixth form next year. 
Um, so please, if you are keen to have a conversation about our sixth form or to apply for our sixth form, uh, make sure you get that application in. Uh, and that can be our level three program, you know, A-levels and A-level equivalents, or that can be if you're considering our sixth form foundation program. Um, again, you know, there is a, a limited number of places on that course. Um, so for the, the A-level program, obviously you're looking at grades of five and above, um, sixes in some subjects, if that's the case. For the level uh, two foundation program, you're looking at grades around the three or four mark. Uh, so please get those applications in nice and quick. And then the final bit from me, just a couple of other little notices. Um, we welcome two new members of staff to the team. Uh, we welcome Joanne Bennett, who joins us as our exams and data manager. Um, jo uh, is, is a parent of a UTC student. It's always wonderful when we get uh, parents who, who want to work at the school, even though they've got their children. I think that says a lot about the, uh, the community and, and the way, the, the ethos that we've built here at the UTC. Um, so really, really pleased to have Joe on board. Uh, and certainly, you know, if you're in year 11 or year 13, you'll be probably getting communication from Joe in the near future regarding the exams. Uh, and we all also welcome uh, Amira Batrawi as our science technician. So uh, Amira joins the science team and she'll very much be working behind the scenes, making sure that once we're back in school again, all of those amazing practical lessons that happen in the science faculty uh, go seamlessly. So um, welcome to two new members of staff. I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll join me and welcome them to our UTC family and our UTC community. Uh, and then the final message from me um, is just a massive congratulations to our Year 13 um, Royal Navy Engineering team. Uh, three or four students went down uh, and competed in the National Royal Navy um, tournament. Uh, Mr Jarrett, the engineering teacher, took them down there and we walked away with three trophies. We walked away with the overall uh, Key Stage 5 Sixth Form Award. We walked away with the Sixth Form uh, Presentation Award uh, and I'm really, really pleased to announce we walked away with the overall Tournament Champion Award. So we can now say that the Great Peter UTC is the 2020 Royal Navy National Engineering Champions. Really, really pleased for that. Well done so much for you guys that went down there. Uh, you may have seen it, it's been out in the local press, certainly the local uh, Peterborough papers have been reporting that. Really, really pleased. Um, you know, we talk about an ethic of excellence and we talk about striving to be our absolute best. And it's, uh, it's these guys that have gone down there and really flown the flag for Peterborough UTC. I'm so, so proud of you. So a huge, huge thank you to me. And again, once we're back in school, once I'm allowed to shake your hand, you know, I look forward to, to welcome you into my office uh, and giving you a proper celebration and a proper well done. Um, that's everything from me. Uh, a reminder that if you do want to get in touch, please use the email address slt at gputc.com. Uh, I will be doing more of these video blogs in the upcoming weeks. Um, as if, if like me, you watch for news and you realise that, you know, we hope to come back after February half term. But certainly yesterday there was a there was a subtle inclination that that might not be the case. Um, and, I, and I know that, like I've said before, from feedback, you prefer the kind of more personal, interactive visual reminder. I'm happy to do that. Please keep uh, keep pushing with the online learning, guys. You know, dipping into those mentor sessions, watching those assemblies, get engaged with that session three. Uh, you know, we're trying to mix it up. We're trying to keep it different to keep you guys engaged. Um, look forward to seeing you all again. Stay safe and take care.